the sellers, it's very difficult to call the shots. So let's go back to a free market situation where demand and supply are nicely in equilibrium at, say, Q star, uh, whoops, keep pressing the um, erase button, Q star, W star, and always label your diagram. So, yeah, it's a bit cheap and cheesy, this, uh, but bear with me. Right, so we've got, uh, there we go again, demand for labor and supply of labor. Right, got a nice equilibrium. What happens if we have something called the monopsonist? Now, the monopsonist, monopsonist, is a single buyer in the market. So, one buyer, single buyer. Now, this is when there are lots of people looking for work, but on the other side of the equation is just one single individual. Uh, let's give him a hat. All right, no stereotyping of capitalists here. So let's make him a bit rotund. And he's got a good life because he can employ people for quite cheap. And he's rather happy about the situation, right? And there are lots of people out there looking for work. Just do heads and shoulders, right? There are thousands of these people. Now, Mr. Monopsonist, um, we'll call him the Mr., is looking at all these people and saying, basically, I can set your rate because I'm the monopsonist. And what happens on the supply and demand diagrams that you've got a bunch of people willing to supply their labor, so all these chaps and chapesses here. And in a market situation where there were many buyers, so um, if this person, let's call this Bob, if Bob wasn't happy, he could leave Mr. Monopsonist, let's call him M. We could leave M and actually, we can do that. <laughs> Go on, back again. Oops. Bob could leave Mr. M and find work elsewhere and therefore command a higher rate or at least a better job. Let's have a look at the market equilibrium. The market equilibrium is between demand and supply at W1, uh, W star, sorry, uh, Q star. Now, Mr. Monopsonist looks at these people and says, well, actually, I can hire you for less. And what I'm going to do, because I'm the only person around and we can't offer, nobody else is going to offer you any work, I'm going to offer you work at W1. So that's WX there, W star, W1. Now, this means fewer people are going to get a job. He doesn't want many people working for him, so he's got Q1 working for him. So what's happened in this situation is that the wage has been pushed down below W star to W1 and fewer people have been employed than in a free market or a market economic situation where these people like Bob can wander off and get a job elsewhere. M is calling the shots and he's quite happy about this, right? So we'll give him a cigar. Oh, I can't give him a cigar, I can't. Uh, he thinks this is rather cool. He's quite happy about this situation. These are not so happy. But he is the company to work for and there's nobody else around, so there's not much competition. Competition would immediately bid up the wages if there was another factory that opened up around the corner or something, M would suddenly find his workers leaving him unless the sum were particularly long for whatever reason. Now this is when a union starts to come in useful. If these people, if Bob and Co joined a union, then they could go into negotiation with Mr. A monopolist with M because then they could send a representative to discuss with them about the wage rates because they are also in the position of being a monopolist if they choose to work together and this becomes very interesting to our economists. So what they do is send a union representative over to M and this chap will start to negotiate for higher wages of course whoops he tries a bit funny there so you've got all these people behind him going yay go bob go bob uh we've elected you as our union leader and as our union leader we want you to increase our wages now the monopsonist is facing a monopolist here because bob has now secured all the workers behind him as a single entity there's a funny looking chap over here that's an alien Right, he secured them as a single entity, so he is now acting as a monopolist versus a monopsonist. So he's the buyer, he's the seller, which means the two can now negotiate over wages. So let's go back to where we were. So here's the demand for labour, here's the supply of labour. 
we have a normal market situation, which in a free market, this would be the rolling wage rate at W star, and Q star would be the quantity of workers. Now the monopsonist, uh, let's just change some colors here, so uh, maybe go to blue or something. The monopsonist, remember, is offering a cheaper wage rate because he's got people under his thumb and can offer W1 and Q1 workers get, get work. On the other hand, they now all um, renegotiate as a union, and because the union is selling their services as one, the union tends to bid up the wage rate, and let's say it takes it to WU. This can mean an improvement in the wages, and in this case to QU, an increase in the amount of people employed by the monopsonist. Now this is a win-win situation for um, the people in work. They've joined a union and the union's not done anything detrimental to them. They've seen an increase in the number of members working in the company and also enjoyed a higher wage rate. So this is rather exciting. This is where a union can be very, very powerful. Now, generally the monopsonists in society uh, in the old days would have been a company town. So where there is only one t a company to work for in the town and they often, um, either from, um, well, from Philothran, Philothran, I can't even say that, philanthropic reasons initially set up uh, great places to live and people would come and flock there uh, to work and they would build uh, great houses for the workers and offer schools and time off etc which are attract more workers but then you had to buy from the company store you had to wear the company t-shirt all the time you you had to live the company life and it's a little bit restricting and when other companies moved in then these company towns faced competition um, often they didn't like it and it led to uh, issues between uh, the the workers uh, and the bosses and it became a us versus them situation which is what we've got here you know you've, you've got two people negotiating over money and it's not how the market generally works except unless it's two people haggling over something uh, it's not generally how the market works because we're looking at monopoly and monopsony and they're very rare however if we include the state in our business then we are certainly looking at many uh, monopsony um, industries where the state, for example, in the UK employs about 90% of all education resources, 90% uh, of health resources. Now, these are extraordinary numbers, which means people who work in the educational industry or people who work in the educational industry face the great monopsonist, uh, the state. And it's very difficult to get work in the private sector. And when you do get work in the private sector, um, it's very highly paying because of the high demand for alternative services. But if you want to work for the government, then you are uh, better off joining the uniform, uh, a, a union, beg your pardon, joining the union to try and bid up your wages from where they would have been had the government uh, just had complete control over your wages. Now, the next issue I'm going to look at is what happens, uh, an analysis or an evaluation of unions, because we can see with a monopsonist, a union can raise the wage rate. Now, just don't want to jump you twice, thank you. Just the once would be nice. There we go. Okay. 